So where we had left off in the last video, we had just gotten a, uh, a limited shell by using a uh, local file inclusion vulnerability that allowed us to, uh, to get some information from the server, upload a uh, malicious GIF file that had some PHP code in it, and then execute a reverse shell uh, that uh, communicated back with our netcat listener. And so you can see right now I am uh, logged in as www-data. Um, I imagine with this that I can't get to the uh, yeah see I can't get to the root folder, which is likely where the uh, the flag is for this. A lot of these uh, virtual boxes have a flag located in the the root folder because um, that pretty much proves right there that you would have uh, root access at that point as long as the the folder permissions weren't misconfigured or something along those lines. So right now I have this uh, limited shell and let's try and log in. Uh, as one of the other users, because so we'd gotten the uh, the passwords for Kent, Mike, and Kane, so we'd try to do a uh, switch user and switch over to uh, Kane here, and we end up getting this uh, message back that uh, this must be run in the terminal. So if we look right now, and we look at what type of uh, shell that we are uh, that we're using right now, we're just using a uh, an SH shell. We don't have TTY, so. Uh, what that means is that we have a little bit of uh, unlimited access to some of the the more uh, uh, some of the better commands that you would get in a bash environment. So what we want to do is upgrade this shell to a bash environment. Two things I want to check that could make this really easy is I want to check uh, do we have Python installed on this and do we have uh, Netcat installed on this because that would make uh, creating other uh, reverse shells a lot easier and also make upgrade, upgrading to a bash environment a lot easier if we have those two things. So I'm just going to check for Python real quick and see. And yes, we do have Python installed. And then uh, let's try netcat. And netcat is installed as well. So that's uh, good for us. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to create a uh, a Python script here and see if we can spawn a uh, bash shell using this. So I'm going to type uh, echo and then uh, import pty semicolon pty dot spawn. And so again we're going to try and spawn a, a bash shell And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this in uh, temp, in the, the temp directory, and let's just call it bash shell. You can call it whatever you want. And so we just created that, and now I'm going to try with Python to run that script and see if that works. Temp bash shell oops, dot py. And now I have what looks to be like a, a better shell. Um, again, if we type uh, ps tac p, so we're looking at the process for what our shell is. And now you can see I have a bash shell. So that's going to give us a little bit more control here. And we can probably use stuff like the, uh, the switch user command. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can switch users to Kane. And this time it worked. It didn't give me that error like before. So go ahead and copy this password and throw it in there and see if that works. And now I am logged in as Kane. So now I should have access to Kane's home folder. Let's see what's in here. <clears throat> so I'm going to uh, Kane's folder. Look at this. So there's uh, message Mike. Uh, let's see what that is. So here's the different stuff that I have access to in here. And it looks like that message Mike. Uh, program right there is running as Mike instead of as Kane. And so if we go back and look at, uh, so let's try and uh, go into Mike's folder. I don't have access to that what other folders are there. So let's try John, Kent. Yeah, so I just have access to the, uh, the Kane folder. So, um, so we'll see what is this message Mike. So message Mike, it looks here like all it's doing is just catting some file uh, that's in the, the home Mike 
directory some message file that it's expecting to be in there, but this message file doesn't exist, so it's not reading anything. Um, so something that we can do with that, since that process is running as Mike and it's executing the cat command, is we can uh, tell it to look for the cat command in some other place and then uh, replace the cat command with something that, that we want it to do. So what we're going to do with that is we're going to look at see what the path currently is. So echo path. I'm going to go ahead and save this because later on, because we're going to overwrite this path and then we're going to want to uh, copy it back to what it is. Otherwise, the, uh, the shell environment is not going to work properly. We won't have our commands anymore. So we got that saved. So now I'm going to uh, change our path to just the relative path here. So path equals here. Path equals. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, so I shouldn't have the the dollar sign there. All right. So now if we check again, we're going to echo our path, and this should just show uh, that period. So just a, a relative location, and that's better. That's what we want now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a uh, cat file here in this local directory and then have that message Mike try and uh, pick up that, that cat file and execute that. So all I'm going to do is type uh, echo bin sh and we're going to make that into a file called cat. And so now Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So uh, the ls command wasn't working like I was expecting it because just like I had said before, um, we had changed the, uh, the the directory where I was looking for the commands. So uh, we do need to change that back now. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. So copy that. We just sabotaged ourselves for a minute. So we're going to export path to equal what it equaled before. And now the ls commit should work again. There we go. So now we have this uh, cat command there. Um, we're also going to want to do a, a ch mod on it. So make uh, have cat have the ability to be executed. So right now we have uh, anybody can execute that cat program, but the idea is we want it to run as Mike, and then that should return us back a shell that has Mike's access instead of having Kane's access. So we're slowly escalating our privileges here. So we're going to go ahead and try that um, message Mike. Oops. Actually, we need to change that back. So do uh, export path equals dot and then a slash message mic and bam. Again, this isn't going to work until we set this back again. So export path equals paste that back in there. And now if I look at who am I? I am Mike again. So now I want to go to Mike's folder. So now in Mike's folder I have a message to root. So let's try that. Message to root, see what that does. So message to root. So it's sending a message to root and I'll just say test. And it looks like it's just echoing that back. And if we look at message to root is echoing that back with what looks like root access. So let's see if we can uh, do a command with that one. So let's try dot slash message to root. And let's see if we can test a command. So bin uh, cat. And then we'll see in the etc. Uh, if we can. Uh, check for that shadow file that's usually only visible by root. And we can, which is good. So right now, we've already got these passwords. I assume they're all the same. We've only really tried canes, but uh, we could at this time try and uh, crack root's password if we wanted to know what root, 
the root password was, but we have the ability to uh, do things just as root. Uh, so we can go ahead and see if we can abuse that uh, that netcat that's installed on here to create another reverse shell that has this time root access. So we're going to create a uh, we're going to create another netcat listener. So nc tac uh, nlvp. We use one two three five this time. So I have a listener going, and so now let's do message to root. And this time, let's do uh, pwn, and then we'll do bin and c. So 192.168.56.100 back to our attacking machine. Just verify that. Uh, verify our address there. So yes, in fact, we'll, that's our address. So that's correct. So go ahead and set that listener back up. So we set our listener, or we set our uh, 1235 was the port that we had assigned for the listener. And we're going to just send it a, uh, a shell and see if that works. And now we are connected. So who am I? And now I am root, so now I have root access, so I should be able to go into root. And I see messages, and I see the flag. I'm just going to cat the uh, the messages real quick, and see what's in there, just out of curiosity. Messages.txt. Yeah, it seems like nothing. All right, so cat flag.txt. And congratulations. We have now owned the system. We have root access. Um, we could upgrade this shell a little bit uh, to the full bash shell. Again, let's see what, what we want it as. Yeah, so we, we could upgrade this to a, a full bash shell again using that, uh, that Python uh, code that we had created. Um, yeah, it should still be saved there, so TMP, so bash shell.py, I think is what we saved it as. And yeah, so now I have full bash shell again. But that brought us back to Mike. So yeah, so maybe we'd have to, uh, to recreate that again um, as root, but I'm not gonna go back through that again. So uh, there's something you can try and do an extra little bit there is uh, try and get to the point where you're root and recreate that, uh, that Python script again and see if you can get that full bash um, as root. And that's about it.